Jim Colosimo, Arnold Rothstein, and Charlie Lucia. Charlie, how are you? Oh. <laughs> None for me. You're a law-abiding citizen. Oh, I'm teetotal. I've never touched it. Ah, he's a light to wait. I like to stay sharp at the tables. Yeah, sharp. The way he wins. He wants to be sharp. Last year, he cleared two million just half of the World Series alone, eh? Two million, if he did. Yeah, they call that one lucky. Well, what do you think I'm sitting next to him for? Chicago's a fine town. Ah. <laughs> that ain't New York, that's for sure. New York ain't New York now with Prohibition. It will be if I have something to say about it. Ain't that the reason we're all here tonight? In addition to their other enterprises, Messrs. Rothstein and Luciano have significant interest in the cabaret business back in New York. And a man such as yourself, with both political influence as well as a passing acquaintance with the seafaring types of the Atlantic Ocean. Hi, Johnny. Talk English. Salvatore. For a cost. Because of different car. Questo big business. So what's the difference? Do what you're going to do. Could you fix us up or no? We'll take all as we can get up to 2,000 crates a month. For starters. You're young fellas. No appreciation for the art of conversation. I got to piss. Mm. I apologize. Ambition can be read as impatience sometimes. Arrogance, too. Yeah. I have a friend, a judge. His daughter's wedding is in a week. I'd like to be able to accommodate him and the 700 guests. You haven't stockpiled? Mm. All sold already. I'm coming up short. Well, I have a load coming in tomorrow. 500 crates, Canadian club. Originally, I'd planned to keep it, but seeing how I'd like to start our relationship off on the right foot, how about I let you have it? How much? 60 grand for the entire load. But you use your own men for the pickup. Send me over the details. We'll settle up in cash tomorrow. All right. All right. Gentlemen, salute. Salute. Cheers. Cheers. Let me ask you something. A guy like Rothstein, what's a fellow like that worth? Him? Ten million at least. On the level? He's as big as they come. And so what you want to do, just ask for a lolly. He'll be expecting you. I'd wish you luck, but it sounds like you don't need it. We make our own luck. True enough. Hey, nice talking to you, huh? You had a lucky streak. Luck had nothing to do with it. I'm a skilled player is what he means. That's what I hear. Mm. So, what's all this about cutting me off? It's not that. It's a small house. We just can't handle your kind of action right now. Well, your credit's good with me. Why don't we get to know each other better? I don't think I like what I'm hearing. Maybe you shouldn't be listening to the grown-ups' conversations. How is that? Charlie, sit down. Charlie, Charlie. As of now, you owe me, what, 93 grand. Less 60 for tonight's load knocks it to 33. So you could keep playing then. I don't gamble where I don't feel welcome. Sorry you feel that way. Cash him out. Hey! Did you get him? Yeah. What the fuck was that? The fucking this! Go on, get in the car. Go on, scram. Come on, let's go, beat it. Arnold Rothstein. I'm very sorry, Mr. Thompson is not available. I take you back. Nucky. I give you a job. Listen. And this is how you fucking repay last me. Last night was not supposed to happen like that, Nucky. Oh, make sure you mention that the Rothstein is. He's cutting your nuts it's off. It's all gonna get straightened out, Nucky, I promise. Are you that stupid? Thank you.
roasting. Charlie Luciano to see you. We got a special guest. Frankie Yale. How are you? Hey, uh, I understand you just got back from Chicago. That's why you brought me here? I asked him to, Frankie. I was visiting a friend. So what? It was a lousy visit, though. Huh? For your friend, I mean. Help yourself. Call his name. Frequented the billiard parlors downtown. He made a comfortable living wagering whether he could swallow certain objects, billiard balls being a specialty. He'd pick a ball, take it down his gullet to here, and regurgitate it back up. And one evening, I decided to challenge this man to a wager. 10,000 in cash for him to do the trick with the billiard ball of my choosing. Now, he knew I'd seen him do this a dozen times, so I can only surmise that he thought I was stupid. We laid down the cash, and I handed him the cue ball. He swallowed it down. It lodged in his throat, and he choked to death on the spot. What I knew, and he didn't, was the cue ball was one sixteenth of an inch larger than the other balls, just too large to swallow. Do you know what the moral of this tale is, Mr. Yale? Don't need a cue ball. The moral of this story is that if I'd cause a stranger to choke to death for my own amusement, what do you think I'll do to you if you don't tell me who ordered you to kill Colosimo? You don't work for me anymore. Let's get that straight right now. And you made that decision, not me. Well, who's gonna drive you? What's the difference? You wanna be a gangster, kid? Go be a gangster. But if you wanna be a gangster in my town, then you'll pay me for the privilege. That envelope you gave me, my end, according to my calculations, you're three grand short. What do you mean? Are you deaf and stupid? You pull a stunt like that, ass fuck me with Honor Rothstein in the process, you owe me another three grand. Ducky, I spent most of the money. Three thousand dollars, you got 48 hours. Hello. Ducky, Arnold Rothstein. What a pleasant surprise. Yeah, I'm sure. So, the reason I've been calling, the delivery I arranged, I never received it. You don't say. Truck ran out of petrol, who knows? We'll chalk it up to a misunderstanding. Chalk it up however you'd like. Fine. Then a hundred grand should cover it. Excuse me? You owe me a hundred thousand dollars, Mr. Thompson. It's bad enough you sold my load to Chicago. My sister-in-law's nephew was one of those drivers. I didn't sell your load to anyone, and I don't care if your mother was one of the drivers. Is this the way you do business? You want to see how I do business? Show your face again in Atlantic City. Okay, gents. Two thousand. Hand like a foot. That's it for me. I'll see you here too, and raise you too. What should I do here, Charlie?
Depends on what the other guy got. Depends on what the other gentleman has. Right. Well, what does he have? How should I know? I'm no swami. The very reason this game is so challenging. There's a lot of money in that pot. How much do you think is in there? Twenty. Twenty-two thousand five hundred dollars. That's right. How much mining equipment do you have to sell to make twenty-two grand buck? A lot. Are you gonna call or fold? See you two. Raise you five. Take it. I was bluffing. I know. So was I. God damn it! Let's say we take a break. Only 14 hours and you're tired already? You wanted to see me? Turns out my sister-in-law's nephew, for a time at least, survived the shooting in the woods. Sorry about your loss. Obviously, if there's uh, anything I could do. There is, actually. You can kill someone for me to settle a debt. I have it on good authority that a James Darmody of Atlantic City was one of the two shooters. Mm. Who's the other one? I don't know. But I bet you're persuasive enough to get Darmody to tell you. Mm. That's a good bet. The only kind I make. Professional baseball has reached a crisis. Charges of crookedness relating to last year's World Series are emerging, with a well-known New York gambler at its center. It doesn't mention you by name, does it? It does everything but. <clears throat> Speculation. Innuendo. And if I remember my law school Latin, a steaming pile of horseshit. Is that the legal term? You had a meeting with some washed up ex-boxer. So what? A Battelle, followed by a very public dinner with sleepy Bill Burns at the Astor Hotel. Is it a crime now for a fellow to eat dinner? Well, the dinner was innocent, counselor, but for dessert, he pitched me on fixing the World Series by bribing the players on the White Sox. A scheme which you threw cold water upon immediately. Isn't that correct, Mr. Rothstein? It certainly is. Then there you have it. And what do I do about this article? You do nothing, Arnold. You get mud on your trousers. Or horse shit. Or horse shit. You don't rub it off. You let it dry. You let it set a while. Then you brush it off nice and easy. World Series was months ago, Lawyer Fallon. And the horseshit hasn't dried yet. Since when do you need permission to look at the ocean? To look at my ocean? Since your boss tried to lift a hundred grand out of my pocket. Mr. Rothstein don't see it that way. Mr. Rothstein don't run this town. No. He runs New York. Maybe I heard of it. I haven't confirmed it yet, but. Word on the street is a DA sniffing around some of the White Sox. Well, let him be wise to put a clothespin on his nose. Any idea which players? See Cotton Jackson, near as I can tell. Get the farm boys to spill their milk. Is that the idea? Doesn't matter what they say, if Patel won't talk. Willie? Really? He's already been flapping his gums. And if the DA pulls him in? He may be able to take a punch, but put him in a witness chair and Abatel will fold like hot laundry. Give it to me again. Baseball is the heart of America. As a patriot, I would never do anything to degrade on Miss Smirch. 
It's better. To besmirch our national pastime. Ladies and gentlemen, this entire ugly affair began when A. Patel and some other cheap gamblers approached me to fix the World Series, a sordid scheme which every newsboy on Broadway knows I turned down flat. And not only was I not in on the deal, I furthermore did not bet one red cent on the series after I found out what was underway. Isn't it true, sir, that a man named Sport Sullivan approached you as well? I'm approached by people every day with all manner of harebrained schemes. Certainly suffering fools can't be illegal. <laughs> you know, it's not too late to go to law school, Arnold. <laughs> I prefer to make my living honestly. Gentlemen. Hey, huh? These are the fellas I told you about. It's Leo D'Alessio. It's Butter Ignatius. And Mickey Doyle. An honor, Mr. Rothstein. So you've heard of me? Naturally. Yeah. Who ain't, huh? And what is it you've heard? Good stuff, you know. That I'm honest? That you'll always get a square deal? Sure. That's why we're here. Reputation takes a lifetime to build, and only seconds to destroy. Wow. Rack them, Charlie. I understand you're interested in the liquor business. Who's interested in making dough? Piles of it. <laughs> Eight ball, $500. You break. There are two ways to make money in the alcohol business. One is to take cheap rot gut whiskey, dilute it, and sell it. I was doing good with that myself. That's the stupid way in which I have no interest. There's a growing demand for good whiskey in the United States. I'm not talking about the swill you stirred up in your chamber pot. I'm talking about the best scotch from Britain. There's a fortune to be made from importing it. It'll be the chic thing to have good whiskey when you have guests, and the rich will vie with one another to serve it. I want to set up a business for importing scotch. We'll have ships with crews we can trust who'll sail it from the distilleries in Europe and unload it outside the three-mile limit. All we have to do is smuggle it ashore. That's where you mugs come in. The ports of Atlantic City are ideal for distribution to the entire eastern seaboard. The only problem is the man who runs that city. Normally, I'd make a deal with such a man, cut him in as a partner, but I find Nucky Thompson to be greedy and unreasonable. Nothing a bullet in the eye won't fix. <laughs> If you'll each sign those forms, I'll take it as your acquiescence to our new arrangement. What are they? Life insurance policies. It's a half a million on each year. You'll be handling large amounts of my money, gentlemen. It's my assurance you won't chisel me. Think of it as an incentive, not to screw things up. To the post. I'll show you out. You know what the nice thing is about the Bronx Zoo, Charlie? There's bars between you and the monkeys. Lucky? Lucky Thompson. Oh, yeah.
Racing results by wire, soon radio, I'm told, will transmit news stories within minutes of their occurrence. It's the age of information, and a businessman lives and sometimes dies on its value. Do you know why I'm a successful gambler, Mr. Doyle? Because you're lucky? He's lucky. I create my luck. I'm a successful gambler because I never bet on an event whose outcome I'm not sure of in advance. Like the World Series. You put the fix in. I employ research, fact-finding. Due diligence, the lawyers call it. Which brings me to Nucky Thompson, the man you said you know everything about. How was I supposed to know a chauffeur carries a gun? Have you been listening to a single word I've said? Sheer and utter incompetence. A woman is shot, an innocent tourist, no less, and you've tipped my hand to Thompson. Boardwalk at night, do it in public. We figure sends a message. You sent the message, all right, that you're idiots. Devil's food. Yes, sir. Thank you. I'll kill that prick myself, Mr. Rothstein. We'll bring you his head if you want. Your grandstanding is commendable, but I have to say, I'm less than convinced. We have bad information, like you said. How can we make it up to you? Nothing says I'm sorry like money. Plus a casino. They shot my brother, Mickey. Took a shot at me. I know it. They're gonna shoot me, Nuck. I know that, too. How? They're always jabbering an Italian, laughing at me behind my back, right to my face. And Luciano, how does he figure in? Your mother didn't tell you? Watch your step, Mickey. Hmm. He's got this kid, some sheeny named Lansky. He approached Chalky, made him an offer, but it was really just a Watson. A ruse? That's the ticket, to find out how many bottles he's moving. Why does he want to know that? What do you think? For information. This is all on orders from Rusty. He wants to muscle in, take over the liquor business in Atlantic City. Ruining baseball isn't enough? Get Chalky on the phone. Yeah. For what? I want you to meet with Lansky. Mickey here will arrange it. Tell him you accept his offer. <laughs> what offer? Whatever offer he makes. Tell him you're unhappy. Nucky's not treating you right. That shouldn't be too hard to believe. You're lucky to be alive, you fucking Polak. Promise them as much liquor as they want and tell them they'll need all their men to haul the load. The idea is to get as many of them in the same place as we can. Remember, and of course, it was me set it up. So, uh, when all is said and done, what you fixing to do about Mr. Rothstein? I'm going to make him the richest corpse in New York. Now you know I've never sought notoriety. Well, it's about to be seeking you, my friend. Half the team's indicted. <sighs> These players? Seacott, Gandal, where would I have met them? You've met Sports Sullivan and Abe Attell, obviously. Their name, too. Poor Abe. One too many haymakers to the head. If he hits him out on this, he could very well take you with him. Girl goes to bed with ten fellows. Who's going to believe her when she says the eleventh is the father? Arnold, I admire your sang -froid, but I'm not the person you need to convince. You were concerned enough to retain my services, and I'm telling you now your concerns were justified. What do you propose? Come here, to Chicago. Into the lion's den? Yes, but before you do that, I want you to think hard about who in this town is willing to do you a favor. I booked passage for myself and Carolyn. Should I be indicted personally, and my attorney assures me that's imminent, he'll let you know how to get in touch. Scotland in November? Uh, I hear the golfing is terrific. Sure. In June, maybe. I'll tour the distilleries, take up the bagpipes, perhaps. There's any number of ways to occupy myself until this baseball business goes away. 
If you're indicted, it don't sound like it will. Ain't there anybody in Chicago who's bomb you to Greece? It's the World Series, Charlie. I'm a pariah, haven't you heard? So use a buffer. This is Johnny Torrio. He's new out there, doesn't have the political connections. Lucky Thompson does. And Torrio can connect you to him. Thompson's not exactly a pal these days, is he? This war we're in. Charlie and I were talking. There's no percentage in it. I mean, I know I brung them in. But these grease balls, these the lesser your brothers. Not your best suggestion. You're a businessman, right? Maybe you cut your losses. I didn't realize I was paying your boys for advice. Well, the advice is free. You pay us because we'll get our hands dirty. This. Thanks for coming. How you doing, kid? Mr. Torrio? I don't like being sandbagged. Come on, huh? Of course, nothing to listen. Let's start talking. The last time we was all together, there was another man as well. Big Jim Colosimo. May rest in peace. He was a good man, Jim. Don't get me wrong. But he didn't look ahead. He didn't look from behind, either. From what Frankie Yell told me. Grow up, huh? What a stupid jokes. My point is, to survive in a business like ours, you gotta look to the future. And to do that, sometimes you gotta let go of the past. It was Arnold reached out, asked that we meet. Son of a bitch tried to have me killed. I'm interested, Mr. Thompson, in putting an end to our hostilities. I would think you would be, considering the way things are going. We could wage war for years. It benefits no one, and the fact is, I have enough problems already. Yes, I've seen the newspapers. And you know I'm about to be indicted for fixing the World Series. So pay someone off. There's the rub. Though I'm quite well known in Chicago, I'm decidedly not well liked there. It sounds to me like you're asking for a favor. I'm asking to make a deal. I need a man with your political reach to quash the indictment. That could be arranged. What? We're talking. In exchange for what? One million in cash. A million dollars. And the location of the remaining D'Alessio brothers. Or you could take your chances in Chicago with my good friend Hartley Replogle. The state's attorney. So you've seen the papers also. This war ends here. Any bad blood, or past transgressions of whatever nature, business or personal, are hereby nullified. I'll have the cash delivered to you in the morning. Charlie, here is the other information you want. Good luck, Mr. Thompson. I do hope we haven't seen the last of each other. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got a train to Chicago. Get my brother on the phone, then call an emergency press conference today at the City Hall. What time? 3 p.m. sharp. I want every newspaper in the county there. If you're in the market for quality liquor coming in off the beaches at a reasonable price and in good supply, I can get it for you. You, personally? Me, my associates. I'm expanding my business, and you are precisely the type of discerning customer I'm looking for. And Nucky Thompson? Nucky's like a father to me. I got a father. Bailey said hello in five years. Sorry to hear it. Who are you, Mr. Dormady? Pardon? You, you show up well-dressed, with a silk cravat and a bold proposal. A year ago, you were a brigand in the woods. 
Who are you? I'm a businessman. A veteran. I just got married. Congratulations. <clears throat> I have a son. He's almost four. Mm. Cart before the horse. Do you have kids, Mr. Rothstein? No. But I'm told they often say unexpected and amusing things. I appreciate you coming to me. I applaud your audacity. And I give you my word that your offer remains in this room. What does that mean? I'll show you out. Mr. Darmody, don't you find it curious neither of us has mentioned that Nucky Thompson spent last night in jail? He did? Election fraud, apparently. Well, things seem to be changing faster than I realized. Maya, Charlie, I believe you know Mr. Masseria. Sure. Knows then <clears throat> perhaps you also know, though it is of course news to me, that a card game you operate is located in territory that Mr. Masseria considers to be his. No considers. He's mine. My thinking was, before any more blood is shed, that a compromise can be reached. More blood? Tompkins Square Park. My two nephews. I don't know what you're talking about. Apparently, two of Mr. Masseria's emissaries to your establishment were murdered shortly after their visit. We do operate a game in what might be termed a gray area territorially, but as to any violence in the neighborhood. Ah, they stubbed themselves, huh? It's a coincidence that it happens. On my streets. No coincidence. Well, this little prick, since he's 10 years old, he causes problems. Well, it seems to me you boys ought to extend a token of goodwill towards Mr. Messeria. Shall we say a one-time fee of $2,000 for the families of those gentlemen, and a tax of 10% on the game going forward. Hold on a fucking second. Charlie. No. 10% is OK. For now. Then we have an agreement. Che fa costi a mazzo riso? E con mia, pazzo ricco. Con la tua mano si entra una sacchetta. Picciotto. Non c'è scassa la minchia. Io ti taglio passo, ti passo. Charlie. Hey, yo. Two grand's bad enough. But 10% of the fucking game. We already pay half the take on that game to you. Yes. And now you boys know why. Thompson on the telephone. I'll take it in here, darling. How's our stomach? It's still a little tentative. So much apple bread. It has a binding effect. Is that the best thing right now? 
Sound elimination is the basis of good health. <clears throat> Mr. Thompson. <clears throat> Mr. Thompson, to what do I owe the pleasure? A change in my circumstances, as I'm sure you've already heard. And are we discussing a problem or a proposition? It depends which side of the phone you're on. I need a port to land some cargo. I was under the impression Atlantic City was aptly named. The Coast Guard's locked me down. I can't land a mackerel. Well, I have an import operation in Montauk. Long Island. Hmm. Too far. What about Philadelphia? We'd have to cut in Waxy Gordon. I'm listening. That's my 20%. And I'll convince Waxy that 20% for him is a fair price also. That's a pretty penny, Arnold. Of course, my cut includes men to oversee the operation. You remember Mr. Luciano? I do. Then it's settled. Direct your ships to Philly. Let me know the details. You've got a new port of call. I could already feel the brotherly love. Arnold Rothstein's here? They're talking, Benny. Oh, so I should tell him to go fuck a duck? Enough for the crazy shit already. Uh. Bring him in before he breaks the house. Mr. Rothstein? Hey, ha! Uh, did you come to sit in? You know, you're always welcome. I'm afraid those sharpers out there would fleece me. to his present difficulties, I've made a deal with Nucky Thompson. He'll be offloading his liquor shipments in Philadelphia. Waxy Gordon will ensure safe arrival. The route to Atlantic City will be my responsibility. And you'd like us to recruit the muscle? I would like you to be the muscle. Hey, uh, we, uh, got some business going on just now. I can see that. Mr. Thompson is paying me a premium. Anybody could ride shotgun. Until you encounter Indians. We're honored. By your trust, they are. And flattered that you would come below 14th Street to discuss it personally. Aren't we, Charlie? Sure. As it happens, I was down here having dinner with Joe Masseria, who left me with a distinct impression he'd still like both of you dead. You broke bread with that prick. We were served a native dish of tripe, which I cannot abide. But I ate it anyway to keep the peace. Some things, Charlie, you just have to swallow. Got speedboats, over a dozen. The whole pickup will take less than an hour. And we're safe from the Coast Guard? I don't want to repeat a last time. Mr. Gordon has given us his assurances. Waxy. And yes, we're safe. That's what you're paying me for. I was beginning to wonder. Once they make sure in Philly, the goods are loaded onto trucks by Waxy's men. I am here, I'll supervise. Then his fellows will get you safe to the border of Atlantic City. To the border? For 20%, they should be taking us all the way. Use the broads now. We gotta walk you home. Kiss goodnight, it'd be nice. Sure. With a lead fucking pipe. Charlie. No one's gonna give you no trouble. They do, they gotta answer to me. And I'll be expecting you around about five. And make damn sure you flash them lights, because I ain't taking no more chances. What the fuck are you doing? 
We're making a delivery. For Nucky Thompson? They cut a deal with Rothstein. Tim Porter's liquor through Philly. Under the auspices of Waxy Gordon. And you fellas have the muscle? I don't fucking believe this. All this is for Nucky. Chalky White's back in business. Jesus Christ. What do you want to do? If I may, this could be an opportunity, gentlemen. The fuck you talking about? We have spoken to you about partnering up. Heroin, out of opportunities. That's right. So why kill each other over a few trucks worth of liquor? You work with Vaxi Gordon. The man's a piece of shit. Not every insult requires a response. A hundred grand, that boy chick. Five of which is mine. So they'll advance us. Sure. Can't kill everyone, Manny. It's not good business. Look, so we let you go. You deliver the load to Chalky. Nucky Thompson is none the wiser. And then what? And then we meet up, separately. And we figure a way to take it all. It's kismet, gentlemen. Rothstein, Nucky. That time has passed. Waxy Gordon's eight. Let us worry about Waxy. Leave the car. Ride with me. It's a good thing, fellas. You'll see. Good work. We maintain those odds. And he's a late entry? It's unorthodox, yes, but there's nothing illegal about it. Set the spider to the fly. You've been known to spin webs yourself, my friend. They are. Charlie, Meyer, say hello to Max Hirsch. Hey, guys. Nice to make you acquaintance. A pleasure. Max trains sidereal. He's running at Aqueduct on the 4th of July. <laughs> Not yet, he ain't. We'll continue to talk. Can we agree on that? You'll talk. I'll listen. How you boys making out? Not so great. But it's nice to get out in the sun. There are cheaper ways to get a tan than picking losers. Are you telling me? My last horse is still running. What's the word from Philadelphia? Business as usual. Near as I can tell. There's a shipment on Thursday from Bill McCoy. Lucky well, Thompson's still alive, so until we hear otherwise. Any idea what happened there? Yeah. With Thompson? Who knows? Well, he is, he's got a beef with his brother. Really? I would have thought James Darmody myself. Nah. Darmody ain't got it in him. Pillow talk, Charlie? With the mother. I'm true with that. What's the matter? Manure. But what can you expect when you conduct your business in a stable? Nucky? Mr. Thompson. Thank you for coming. I apologize for the accommodations. How do we do this in private? How can we help, Nuck? You can start by getting the piss ants who work for you in line. Vito Scalercio? Never heard of him. Well, he shot me, John. And before the Fed shot him, he was living in a building leased by your boy. What? Al Capone. I knew something was up. The little prick's been talking to your Jimmy Domini. 
He came to see me months ago. Al did. Mr. Dormady, offering to sell me liquor. Now you're telling me this? The day after you were arrested. In any case, I turned him down. And Luciano? Lansky, can you vouch for them? That they're not in cahoots with Dormady? No, I can't. But I can tell you one of Waxy Gordon's men was killed making your delivery last month. A failed hijacking, I was told. The pups have grown fangs, gentlemen. What are you gonna do? What would you do, John? Kill the prick. I'm under indictment. The feds are up my ass. Then take a plea. Retire some. With what? All my money's tied up at a land deal. Do nothing. I beg your pardon? Well, you have no move, Mr. Thompson. You do nothing. He's under attack, Arnold. There's all the more reason for patience. I've made my living, Mr. Thompson, in large part as a gambler. Some days I make 20 bets. Some days I make none. There are weeks, sometimes months, in fact, when I don't make a bet at all because there simply is no play. So I wait, plan, marshal my resources. And when I finally see an opportunity and there is a bet to make, I bet it all. Mr. Thompson, I've heard only good things. Not from me, of course. Well, that certainly narrows down the list of suspects. You like baseball? Yes. Ty Cobb signed this. Now it's yours. What do you say, Teddy? Ty Cobb is a bad man. He doesn't like to be crossed, that's for sure. But if your team's down, he's the guy you want at bat. Go on, kiddo. So, your case. Arnold tells me you'd like to go in a new direction. Preferably away from jail. This Ginsburg you had defending you. Is Law's main focus? There's something he does when he's not shoeing horses. I hope the meter's not running. I'd hate to think I'm paying to hear what a fool I am. That part's on the house. Once you get past Mr. Fallon's charm, I think you'll find him quite effective. Well, can you get the venue changed back to Atlantic City? Probably not. But if there's a seed of doubt to be sown on your behalf, I am quite effective with juries. And all this farming will set me back what? $80 per hour. Which also buys you my uncanny ability to make friends with judges. And if I told you I had no money for bribes? Then you'd be relying solely on my legal acumen. What would you do, Arnold? No one likes a long shot more than a gambler. I'd understood it was brown. So much. There's all different types. It should be gold, the X me. They try it once, you got a customer for life. And your supplier? Some chink downtown. Ship it in from the Orient. We could start an import operation. Chinese lanterns, things of that nature. Cut out the middle, man. Just so you know, we come to you with this first. Out of respect. Sir, Lucky Thompson called. Mr. Thompson, congratulations. I hear Mr. Fallon earned his fee. Well, I'm sure he thinks he did. <laughs> what can I do for you? Manny Horvitz. Mm-hmm. I've heard of him. 
heard the name. And if he were suddenly to be among the departed? Why do you ask? As a courtesy. He has a connection to Waxy Gordon, who I know has a connection to you. If Mr. Horvitz were to go? Who gives a shit? I would have no opinion one way or the other. Well then, it appears I have a decision to make. Flip a coin. When it's in the air, you'll know which side you're hoping for. How's about them Nefertiti's? That canter, luckiest year of life. This Kent is no typical Corrine. You speak from experience? I speak as her landlord, Mr. Yale. The second luckiest year to life. Apartment house of mine on West 57. A tenant. Now Remus has heard everything. You can tell Remus it happens to be true. Chip, you made it. I prefer to simplify things. Well, I got money, you got booze. What could be simpler than that? That I sell to one buyer only. Effective immediately, I'll be exporting exclusively from Atlantic City to Mr. Rothstein. If you'd like, you can buy directly from him. At a 50% markup. Well, you could always buy from Brooklyn. It's beloved. Peg leg Lonigan. Those patties won't sell to Italians. Sorry, boys. New year, new rules. I well, see, that makes sense. Chink I know, runs a laundry. Tells me 23 is the year of the pig. This is a business decision, Mr. Rossetti. I come all the way down here, put up with car trouble. We all got the same news. Yeah, but we ain't all in the same fucking boat. I'm getting squeezed on all sides here by Partially every- Partially No, fuck you, Frank. Your fucking rat hole bar and your warehouse in Canasi. I don't see you doing me any favors, Amiku. And you, you smug kike midget. Creeping around like a fucking dentist with the ether. Why don't you watch your fucking shit? Why don't you go sit in the corner, short pants? And then there's you. Fucking breadstick in a bow tie. You pasty faced cocksucker. You must be tired, Mr. Rossetti. That can make a man irritable. You need some rest. I need 500 cases of rum. You and your men. My guests at the Ritz. Well, you think I can't float my own hotel room? I'm making a goodwill gesture. Accept it or not. How about I make one, too? Bro? You'll not do it here. I'll shit you up like yesterday's sausage, you bog trot prick. You're making my decision very easy. Nobody here could take a joke. What do you know about this means, fella? He's a colorful personality. I don't need to get wrapped up in Harry Doherty's mess. Do you? Well, the protection is valuable. The cost is insignificant overall. You're collecting money in a fishbowl. I'd never advise against caution. Considering the ongoing volatility in the marketplace. If you're poking around Manny Harvitz, why don't you just say so? Do you have a suspect? Waxy Gordon comes to mind. Naturally. But it's not Waxy. Because Waxy would have to clear it with you, and you would have said no, because you're in business with me. That could be what I want you to think. It could. But I doubt it. How can you be sure? Because if you were trying to be obvious, you'd never be that obvious. This is why I enjoy our conversations. I do hope you're paying equally close attention to our arrangement. There's a shipment going out tonight. We agreed on the 4th. That's tonight. It's tomorrow, Mr. Thompson. Of course it is. My mistake. Well, 
Man's allowed to enjoy himself every now and then. I've got people on top of it, Arnold. That's why I pay them. As long as they have calendars. Your radiators leak. West 57th Street. Miss Kent's building. You own it. You might want to protect your investment. Are you looking to rent? East of the park would suit you better. What are you implying? She's a charming and vivacious young woman. Mr. Doyle, why am I talking to you? Because uh, you called me. But why am I calling you? Uh, why is that even occurring? If I had my liquor on the timely basis your employer promised, if in fact I could reach your employer, who now seems to think acceptable business practice to disappear for days on end, this conversation would not be taking place. And that would make me very happy. Yeah. I understand. Listen, Mr. Ross. I want what I paid for. I want it now. Okay, sir. And I don't ever want to find myself chatting with you again. Of course. Is that clear? Yeah. You have it by tomorrow morning. Yeah. Hey, Rothstein, warm as a lizard. <laughs> What'd he say? That he's expecting his delivery. And what did you tell him? That it's coming. What do you think? What do I think? You're a fucking idiot. Watch your step, Eli. I'm your boss. Nucky explicitly said to avoid table heights. I heard. There's no way to use the back roads. Not till May, at the earliest. So hold off making the delivery. And get your brother's foot up my ass? No thanks. I'm telling you not to do this, Mickey. I'm not doing nothing. They are. I tried to stop them. They wouldn't listen. Because Mickey, because they were under orders to get you what you paid for. And yet, you escaped. We lost 11 men. Was I supposed to get myself killed too? Rossetti controls the roads in and out of Tabor Heights, taking up residents in the town, Commandeered the sheriff's department. He burned the sheriff. Let's discuss our options. Our options? To solve this problem. How long have you known Mr. Rossetti? A year or so? I don't know. You were the one who introduced me. He kicks up the Joe Masseria. With whom I have a very delicate truce. Over what? That's not your concern. But what might solve a problem for you creates a bigger one for me. What would you do about a mad dog? Before anything else, I'd find out who its master was. Rossetti doesn't respect any rules, Arnold. That makes him bad for business, yours and mine. I'd like to talk to Mr. Thompson in private, please. for business isn't it what would you know about it conducting yours like some drunken shopkeeper all right arnold you're allowed to blow off steam it's not all right do you think i entered into this arrangement because i value your companionship you are a convenience of geography and supply you promised a quantity and a price you have failed to deliver and now Owing to your inability to manage your own affairs in New Jersey, a state I have little interest in or affection for, you expect me to start a war in New York where things actually matter? I expect you to understand that Jip Rossetti is trouble for everyone. I lost an entire because convoy. Because of your own cavalierness. Because you run off to Manhattan at a moment's notice to rut with some showgirl. You'd be wise to leave Miss Kent out of this. Why, you can't. Do you even begin to understand how weak that makes you That's look? It's a big noise from a man who's dead below the waist. I practice discretion. You practice bullshit. Who the fuck are you, Arnold? Aside from a little weasel with a good poker face. I get lost in all these fields here. I don't know where the hell I'm It wasn't the money, believe me. 
Though I'd be lying if I said it didn't sting. It was his attitude, mostly. The arrogance. Hubris, the Greeks call it. Well, look what happened to them. Conquered by Italians, just like Nucky. New Year's. Nucky's party. I said some things I shouldn't have. I have thick skin, Mr. Rossetti. Quite pale, as you can see, but very thick. Sticks and stones, huh? I'm glad you see it that way. Couldn't do business otherwise. Which brings us here tonight. In light of recent developments, it appears I'm short a supplier. Well, you are in luck. The Tabor Heights, or as I like to call it, my little slice of paradise, happens to be located on the same ocean that Nucky Thompson used to control. They all have the same boats, same booze, hell. I even give you the same price. We're even 60 miles closer to New York. I only want the genuine article. I have no use for anything less. Is that today's? Yeah, evening edition. Give me one. Oh, thanks, mister. Hey. Thought you said this was today's. All this stuff happened yesterday. Well, sure, that's... You there for a second. From now on, room 207 at the Kinneret Lodge. Add me to your room. Yeah, you betcha. Tomorrow, just after midnight, 600 cases of whiskey coming in. Now come around if you want. Sample for yourselves. Gentlemen, he's trustworthy. He's a chink. I ain't inviting him over for Christmas dinner. Fifty thousand a piece is a lot of money. Seven on the street make ten times that. If you want to make extra sure, we we'll make sure we get your. Oh, Christmas times. Oh, shit. <laughs> Baxter, you old so and so. House tricks. Gangbusters, I tell you, I'm selling radios now. Well, aren't you going to introduce me? George Baxter, meet Arnold Rothstein, Charlie Luciano, and Billy Kent. Charmed, I'm sure. Well, don't make up your mind so soon. <laughs> Go ahead. No reason for both of us to suffer. Don't linger now. <laughs> so you're out of the cutlery business now? Well, there's a lot more silver in the Radio Corporation of America. How about RCA, the official radio of the world's playground? Strictly on the QT. I know a, a charming lass was very close to Mr. David Sarnoff himself. And I bet, I am certain, that with an honor for Frankie Yale, Waxy Gordon, Peg Leg Lonergan, and Bill Lovett in Brooklyn. Torio, if he'll come, and Arnold Rothstein, we need to get them here as soon as possible. What for? Joe Massarea is backing Giprosetti, so I'll need to kill them both. Joe Massarea has an army. That's why we're going to need help. You all came here on short notice. I appreciate that. 
and I won't waste anyone's time. Each of us has our own interests. Each of us has our own needs. None of us can proceed without the goodwill and trust of, of of our friends. I'm looking forward to the future. There's going to be new opportunities, great opportunities, with sympathetic allies in Washington and new markets opening up to the West, all the way to Chicago. Opportunities I intend to share to the benefit of all of us. Expansion, cooperation, profit, peace. Isn't that what we all want? You sing at a different tune from last time I come. I've reconsidered my position, Frank. I don't blame you. I have a right to protect myself. What's that got to do with us? We're neighbors, Waxy. I got no beef with Rosetti. Not yet. I don't go looking for a fight. Neither do I. But I'm in one. That's your bad luck. And next time it'll be yours, Mr. Lonergan. Or Bill's, or Frank's. And if you weren't already thinking that, you wouldn't have come here tonight. Italians, Irish, Jews, we could be at each other's throats, or we could set rules here that we can all prosper by, now and forever. How would we work that? Joe Massarea is backing Jip Rossetti to steal what I've built what I've struggled for on the steps of my own home. I'm going to fight him. I'm going to win. I need your help. In exchange, I'll be proud to call every one of you my partner. Those present I accepted your invitation out of respect for our past dealings and to show our genuine concern for your well-being. What does that mean, Arnold? It means everyone here wishes you all the luck in the world. You won't back me? Is that what he persuaded you to do? It didn't take persuading. I warned you. You wouldn't listen. Now look where we are. What did you tell them? That business with you is more trouble than it's worth. You're letting emotions get in the way of sense. Have you known that to be a habit of mine? Spend the night. I won't forget this. Do you hear me, Arnold? I will not forget. Arnold? 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 Who's is our backbone? But sooner or later, this Mishigas will go the way of the ostrich feather. Yiddish, Meyer? I can't think of a more obvious route to my acquiescence than shared commonality. How about a good idea? Hey, uh, you're the one who always said to look where no one else is. That's what this deal is. 50 pounds of heroin for 100 grain. Do you know what a shot to nothing is? It's used in snooker. It's a shot in which a player attempts a difficult pot, but with safety in mind, regardless of his actually potting anything. Sounds like nothing for nothing to me. On the surface, yes, but by design. In the event of his missing, he leaves his opponent in a position of being unable to strike back. We're on the verge of a war. Charlie, you heard it yourself. Lucky Thompson's about to move on Joe Masseria, and until such time as one of them is dead, 
It would be unwise to venture into any new deals. What if the deal won't wait? A deal will always wait. And a fool will always rush in. I like the concept, boys, but the timing leaves much to be desired. I'm saying three words. Overholt. Distillery, Pennsylvania. I know about Overholt, Mr. Doyle. What I don't is why you wish to discuss it with me. Because I'm sitting in it right now. It's very large. And a certain person that we both know made an arrangement with another person to run it. But that first person, his back is to the wall. I bet he'd give up anything just to keep from going under for a third time. I'm listening. Arnold. I'm calling with an offer. How did you get this number? Is that important? No. Your distillery in Pennsylvania Overholt. For a percentage of ownership, I can arrange for Joe Masseria to back away from Jip Rossetti. Back away meaning what? That he completely pulls his support, removes all of his men. How much of a percentage? Ninety-nine. Mr. Thompson. I will require ninety-nine percent. I'm offering you a way out. If I can deliver Masseria, do we have a deal? Yes. You'll be hearing from me later. The fuck? Toto. Son you content with that bone? And you? I'm sorry. I never know your name. Maya. Maya. Is that ours? No anymore. Charlie. Maya, thank you for coming. I won't keep you very long since you have such full portions on your plates. What's that doing here? I had it delivered so that Mr. Masseria could see that I'm as good as my word. The two of you. I've agreed to new terms of peace, given the change in circumstances. What change? That this heroin that I paid for with my fucking money now belongs to him. He set me up, Joe. You fucking set me up. Who the fuck do you think you are? Charlie, Charlie. I worked for that. I busted my ass for that. It was my idea, my deal. Charlie. You wouldn't lift a finger, sit behind your desk, making phone calls. I'm out there in the fucking world. Sir? Charlie, if you don't shut up, we're both dead. Yes. All this time, I thought I'd had some civilizing effect. But there's only so much you can teach a person until you reach the limits of his capabilities. You understand, though, don't you, Maya? Yes, I do. And it's your job, then, if you want it. Seeing as how I'm flush with product, I'd like to offer a proposition. How would you like to join me in the heroin business? In exchange for what? Hey! Hey! Fuck is everybody? They're gone. They're gone where? New York. Masseria is ordered. Get out of here! Get down! Hey, 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 hey! No, no, no!
Fuck him! Let's go! Everybody knows each other. Mr. Mazzaria and I have not actually met. Does he speak English? He's not in the mood. I just want this to be clear. He'll understand what you say. We'd like to settle things. We think you do too. What makes you think that? Why else would you show up? You see what the Thompson brothers are contemplating. I have my territory. South to Cape May, north to Asbury Park, west to Trenton. I have the casinos, the numbers, and the wire. I'm not looking for anything else. Haven't we had this conversation? I didn't ask for trouble. What was brought to my doorstep, I returned. I'd expect all of you to do exactly the same. You tried to put me in federal court. You were greedy. And you were desperate. Fifteen of his men killed. On the road out of town. With the deal already struck. You landed on your feet. You wish to pretend you never gave What's wrong with There was no arrangement. They are gay. I agree to the contract. Now, why I should trust any word come out of your mouth, though? Huh? That's a reasonable question. Let him see it. Broadway show, have the chop at Keens, do a little window shopping, and not be looking over my shoulder every second I'm at it. And in return? Maybe you enjoy the beach here. Not especially. I want peace, Arnold. That's all. Where you shop and where you eat is no concern of ours. This ends that. How are you, Charlie? I'm well, A.R. Thanks for reaction. It's a good boy. Why you keeps me informed? Bono, picciotto. Ora I'm in my man's troubles come from his inability to sit quietly in a room by himself. You should try it. Is that what you're doing here? I talked to Lolly. He's expecting you. No limit at the table. That's thoughtful. Call it a thank you. I ran the odds on the way down. On what? Whether you'd attempt to kill me. What'd you come up with? 14 to 1. Against. Mr. Madden. An honor to have finally made your acquaintance. Please. <clears throat> Mr. Madden tells me you're interested in heroin. As a commodity, yes. This is a business with which you are familiar? One of many. Biggest fish in Harlem. However, I do intend to expand to other Libyan markets. Libyan, what he calls the colors. You are a dependable and amply stocked supplier? 
One who requires the utmost discretion. He's got my vouch, like I told you. Twenty pounds uncut. I will weigh it myself to ensure good measure. Eighty thousand in cash. Large bills only. Why would you expect otherwise? My understanding, you control the local numbers racket. Therefore, I transact my business like a schoolboy, dealing in pennies, nickels, and dimes. It's not my intention to offend you. Nonetheless, you succeeded despite yourself. <laughs> to whom do I dispatch payment? My associate, Mr. Diamond, will be in touch. I have other business with Mr. Madden. Gentlemen. I find you don't really know a man until you play cards with him. Don't we know each other, Arnold? One would have thought so. Sure you want to trust him? You know anyone else with that kind of money? Surely things aren't that bad, Nookie. I keep it that way by rarely playing. This is a game of skill. I suppose an intermediate position is better than none at all. Well, sure, if action is your only goal. Why else would I have asked you to play? You can't really know a man. Come on. You gonna raise or not? You fancy yourself a sportsman, Arnold. What would you do here? I would play against me like you mean it. <laughs> Raising 5,000. I know you got my attention. Do you recall our first encounter, Mr. Thompson? You needed supplies for a wedding. Is that what I said? Something like that. What the hell are we doing here? You're a type I'd recognized. What type is that? A small town gladhander, peering over the fence, eager to stick his finger in a new piece of pie. I don't like pie. Well. I have learned something new about you. Everything you want from me tonight is on the table. That's more exciting to you than it is to me. Why does that make me sad? <laughs> Jesus Christ. You need to send for a priest. Maybe not in your case. Do you have any idea who you're talking to? Yeah, someone who's taken a long time to lose and back off from my shoulder. Why, it's all an aspect of the contest. There are other games, Arnold. No, there's only the game you're in now. All in. Call. Mm. Flush, clean high. <clears throat> I figured you for a straight. And you figured me wrong again. <laughs> nice getting to know you, Arnold. I said fresh deck. I just open this one, sir. I don't like the feel of it. When you have some other engagement, don't look at him. Don't look at him. Look at me. I'm the player. Yeah.
Thanks for the pocket change, Goldstein. Rothstein. He's a great man, A.R., but he doesn't like to lose. Nobody likes to, but we all have to learn how. The Tampa deal, I'm taking it off the table. If it's a matter of money, then... It's not. I can't rely on a man so blinded by his obsession with winning. Tell him I'll find a new partner. Well, the terms of your proposal will be the same. For who? For me. Without Rothstein. Mr. Rothstein is not my boss. Say hello to Abe Redstone. Pleasure to make you. Hello. Mrs. Rowan, is it? It is. Yes, sir. I was just telling Abe here, uh -huh. huh? Hmm. I have the distinct feeling we've met somewhere before. I'm sure you're mistaken. I'd have remembered. Mm. I have it. Gloves. I beg your pardon? You attended to me at best in company. Finer men's accessories? I'm afraid I've never worked there, sir. Well, my mistake, then. So, I was just telling Abe here how I put your husband into Anaconda. Right. Yes, you did. And what does your husband do? Mrs. Uh... Rowan. He's in sales, sir. Railroad equipment. Ah, I see. And he bought into this Anaconda Realty Trust? He did, sir. Yes. After I insisted, you tried to talk him out of it. Right? Yes. But I regretted not buying it, and we lost a great deal of money. I'm so sorry, Mr. Bennett. I don't feel well. Excuse me. Nervous type. Not me. Honors and gold? Mrs. Thompson, this is Arnold Rothstein calling. Did you receive my gift? I did, sir. Thank you. Lovely as it was to see you again, I will thank you in advance for your discretion. Yes, sir. I'm assuming a reciprocal arrangement would be to your advantage as well? It would. And until next time. Sir? <clears throat> Mr. Rothstein. Will you be needing the car? No. Not this evening. Are you feeling all right? I'm fine, thank you. Is Mrs. Rothstein awake? No, sir, she retired early. May I ask you a question, Peter? Of course, sir. Why is it you don't gamble? Because I don't have the stomach for it. The first time I ever played craps, I won $32. I was nine years old. Lucky little boy. Yes. Or at least I used to think so. Mickey Doyle? is worth half a million dollars? Well, not while he's breathing. The Rothmere Insurance Company. 
one of my subsidiaries. So I gather. So what are you waiting for? Kill him. At the very least, I wanted to extend you the courtesy of obtaining your permission. Do I get a cut? That's a rather callous attitude. He's an imbecile whom I'd be glad to be rid of. I was under the impression Mr. Doyle was an integral part of your organization. Not half a million integral. Make me an offer. To not kill him? How's a plug nickel sound? You could buy the policy from me, making yourself the beneficiary. Money troubles, Arnold? It's the usual ebb and flow of the stock market. But more ebb at the moment. It appears I'm the victim of an unscrupulous broker. So plot your revenge. That takes cash. My bankroll is waning at present. Ten cents on the dollar. Twenty. That's a hundred grand, Arnold. Yes, it is. It's probably the best investment I'll ever make. I know a dozen people who'd kill Nikki for free. May I offer you some free advice? Is there anything more expensive in the world? Forget this place and call me. I own several buildings uptown. Perhaps I could steer you to more suitable accommodations. In exchange for what? Mr. Bennett, he and his ilk are systematically driving down the price of Anaconda Realty stock in which I'm invested. Soon, no doubt, they plan on buying it back. I need to know when this happens. I could lose my job. Yes, you could, or perhaps gain something better. <laughs> Come on, Abe. Quit flirting. Hello, Robert. Nice chatting with you, Mrs. Ryan. It's impossible to get ahead. And believe me, I've tried. I work hard, I save my... You owe no one any explanations, Miss Rowan. Mr. Bennett. Mr. Bennett is a criminal, no different than... Than me? I was going to say my husband. Though, to be fair, one could paint me with that same brush. Anaconda Realty. Mr. Bennett and his partners own the company. He bought more shares this afternoon. You should do so yourself as soon as possible. 30,000 shares preferred stock. You shouldn't sell until he does. I'll let you know when that happens. In return for what? A rent-free apartment. Guaranteed for five years. A safe neighborhood with rooms for the children. You'll accept nothing from Mr. Thompson, yet you will from me. I earned this. And when it's over, I owe you nothing. We have a deal. Very well.
I've never done business with a woman before. Well, how did you like it? Quite the treat. Hello. I'm Miss Sweet. Been a while. Ayo's funeral. Sad day. Rest his soul. Brings you here. Wife's been hocking me for a holiday. Married. Married. A son. Makes you concentrate on the future. Maria, Well, we should all. We should. Meyer. My best to Charlie. We don't talk too often. One of us is still a bachelor. 